And so it is. The portal has closed and we send all this amazing divine love through our portals of our own sacred hearts, not only into our lives, but into all life on Mother Earth. And so it is. So this was a beautiful meditation with Orin. It's actually a transmission of energy. If you have not worked with Orin before, then I recommend that you join us often for these free calls where we do a lot of work with Orin and these beautiful transmissions. So some of you are joining for the first time, I see. And so I wanted to quickly just introduce myself uh, and also explain why the calls are done the way that they are done. So my name is Adi. And I assume that many of us have met through the work we have done with Patricia Cota Robles, especially now for the 1111 or the World Congress on Illumination. And so one of my purposes, as we have many purposes, each one of us in this lifetime, was to actually work with Patricia and to co-create videos that have been really viewed by many, many thousands of people all around the world in the last 10 years. And so, as I said, we have many purposes. And as I embodied on this planet, uh, I was embodied in a place that was called Czechoslovakia. Uh, right now it is Czech Republic. And when I entered this world, I entered with multidimensional awareness. And so I was able to constantly perceive multidimensional reality. And one of the wonderful things that accompanied me when I was a little kid was that I could hear the sound of Om. And my family was not spiritual, but my grandmother was very much earth-centered. And so I call her a pagan. She was definitely someone who every day communed with nature. And so I believe that we choose these families to support our purpose. And so I was hearing the sound of Om. And you know, as a little kid, you don't like think about it because it just is. And so for me, it was this experience of the oneness of all life. So every time the sound of Om sounded, everything around me always became one. And so, you know, I experienced this underlying oneness of all life, which is really what's guiding us through this ascension process. And of course, even though we are born into small bodies, we are not small in any way. We are very, 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 very vast beings with vast consciousness. And that was my next experience in my childhood, one of the many, uh, was that I was doing meditations and to start with meditation when I was 13, I chose somehow the meditations that are done in Tibet and in Buddhism. And I started to do a lot of chanting from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And when I chanted with passion and everything is about passion because we need to generate so much energy that the energy tips the balance. And it means we go from being just a little human being into the vastness. And so through these chants, I generated so much energy that one day I completely was able to ascend into the divine self. And as I was in the divine self, I became the divine self. And when I say I, I no longer was the human. And so this happened when I was 13. And since that day, Obviously, we are never the same when the divine self becomes who we are. And so since that day, since the age of 13, it has been just visitations upon visitations, not only from the beings from higher realms that we, you know, can call the company of heaven, as Patricia calls it, the divine beings, but also being able to visit with them in these divine realms, the divine court. And so for decades and decades this has been happening and it's still happening and so here on these calls I share whatever it is um, that is given to us here through this channel really and that is the green Tara the cosmic mother nature and so um, we have been working here mainly with divine mother in 2017 in the middle of the night you know, we were doing some invocations with Patricia Cota Robles, and it was in 2017 in August, which was the night of the solar eclipse, which was a very powerful eclipse. And during the eclipse, you know, it's a window of cosmic opportunity. And what happened after all the chanting with Patricia, suddenly Divine Mother appeared for the first time I was able to see her in the physical. 
and she actually came into our home in the middle of the night and that was an initiation and if you listen to Patricia's call on 11.11, for example, she was explaining how Divine Mother has been coming back into this world little by little for decades. And so some people met Divine Mother, you know, decades ago, and some people are meeting her now. And so it's not exactly that that was the night when she arrived, but that was the night when I got to meet her. Now, when you meet Divine Mother, of course... Again, life-changing experience. You can never ever go back to being your old self. And so the purpose of these calls that I do here are always to bring the energy of Divine Mother to all of us, to empower us with tools that I found useful through meditation, through chanting, through different types of yoga and breathing, and to constantly be guided into the opening of this miraculous portal within us, which is the Sacred Heart. Divine Mother is coming into this world through her children. And so some children still have very closed hearts. And those are the children. They are all her children. But some have very closed hearts. So they live in the world of complete materialism, in hatred, in the unconsciousness of, you know, friends and enemies. And all of that is not the nature of our Divine Mother. And so she needs us she needs you and me in this world those who are willing to live through the oneness of all life and which includes of course even the animals the plants the earth all of humanity all of our children you know sisters and brothers and to live with the consciousness of oneness but that also means incredible divine strength so when divine mother first appeared uh, in 2017, it was after many years of working with Yogananda. So I was working with Yogananda every single day and Yogananda appeared also in his physical body and he was teaching the steps of how to achieve self-realization. So those are the steps I'm always teaching here for free as well. And the reason for all of it is so that Mother earth can successfully ascend and so that we can ascend with her so that when this amazing opportunity is here now that the earth doesn't miss the opportunity that humanity doesn't miss the opportunity and it is all about three things number one purification of our own life force purification of all life force in this world we use different tools for purification, but here very often we use the violet flame, whether it is with Patricia or whether it is with Orin, but also I personally use the living fire of God, just like the yogis did, which would be the golden fire of God. So once we purify enough, then we have removed the dirt that surrounds us. You can bet that every single one of us has some kind of dirt around us just by the nature of this world whether it is us creating it or whether we simply got into it by being here in this world this world got very dirty and the dirt in this world was all about unconsciousness and lack of love and so we purify our own being but we purify the world every single day until it's all done it's like a big burden you know it's like a big big burden sitting upon the earth but every time we meditate every time we are loving every time we chant a mantra we make big difference in this world i've seen it with every mantra we sing with every om we sing we make a huge huge difference in this world and so for example, Om, I recommend every single day as the simplest, most powerful tool we have in this world. Of course, uh, along with the violet flame or the living fire of God. So once we have purified enough, then what? Then we need to add more light. So it's, I, like I said, it's actually a three-step process. Number one, purification. Number two is adding light. So think about it this way. First, we get rid of the dirt, but then we want to shine up. And so how do we shine up? We work with these different kingdoms and queendoms, and we work with light, adding light. And this is an ancient, ancient practice. This has nothing to do with the modern, you know, light working terms. This is ancient, always adding light. 
and light is inexhaustible and we can add every day more and more and more and more light and that is actually by design our purpose and then finally of course what is it all about it is about love light without love is not complete it is about love light and so how can we become all love so once again the process is very simple three steps purification adding light becoming all love so you can think about every day that way when you wake up in the morning and this is the teachings of divine mother we want to every day step into the world with some kind of practice not to just maintain our energy but to every day clear and clean and then enhance and enhance and enhance our energy ancient civilizations have known it i personally always go back to the civilizations where i had a lot of embodiment on this planet and it was the civilization that we know as lemuria but we called it mu and so we called it mu for a very specific reason it is the vibration actually it's not just a name but mu as really the holy cow mu makes the sound that was the first civilization here on planet earth that i personally actually remember really well and so i go back to that because we didn't know evil we didn't know dysfunction we didn't know disease we didn't know any distortions and so living in that consciousness of divine awareness where we were constantly aware of our own divinity we were constantly aware of the divin divinity within nature which meant divinity within this planet divinity within plants divinity within animals divinity within the sky the stars the sun and this galaxy we had complete divine awareness at all times and so as we had the divine awareness we were doing things that today you know in this world for example as qigong and that's really interesting or taoism those are the ancient teachings that originated in mu and they are quite different from the teachings of the golden age of atlantis that we for example know as yoga so there are different teachings for different civilizations for different conditions on this planet and so here we often speak about mu as the original design of mother earth it is the true design where there was no dysfunction and so this ascension process is actually about returning to the original natural harmonious thriving that we knew in a mu and of course we live in a time space reality and so we can say a lot of things have happened in between but within us now what we are awakening is this remembrance and these children of mu we call them the rainbow children and that's you and me here on this planet this ascension is also a process of becoming all love and that can only happen when the sacred portal of our heart is fully open and so that's why we have these beautiful processes here to make sure that all of us can fully be in service fully in service is really not something the ego decides but actually the heart becomes when the heart becomes liberated which is the quote that jesus gave us be like children to enter the kingdom of heaven so to explain this it actually means unburden your heart so that you can be once again completely connected to your own divine self which is the kingdom the queendom within us so when a human being achieves that state it is an energetic transformation so i experience all these states that i speak about and that's the only reason actually how i can speak about them is through self-realization but again you know i don't use video on these calls for several reasons number one my guides told me not to number two i believe the divine self doesn't have a face and so focusing on someone's face would be missing the whole point about the divine self that we are all becoming actually focusing on the face of anyone in this world has been part of our enslavement so we have been trapped as you know 
by the illusion of our identity. And the identity was so deeply connected to our physical body. Our physical body used to be a great gift, but it became a burden. And so again, when you think about the different civilizations we have here on planet Earth, the civilization of Mu was definitely not focused on the body, was not focused on the face. The face was almost non-existent because of all the light that was running through this, what we call body. And the body was very ethereal. It was not about identity in any way. And you can still find um, some kind of element of this in the Polynesians. So the Polynesian nations, like the Hawaiian nation, the original, like even Aboriginal in Australia, those are the nations that were part of the Mu civilization. So they still have the DNA that runs through them. And it's so much more about collective, no identity, no face, not really paying any attention to some kind of appearance. And so that is the Mu civilization. And then, of course, the Atlantean civilization was very much different. And so they also had different tools for self-realization. And so what we today, for example, call the path of yoga, that is the path of uh, Atlantean civilization. And that is the path of Shiva. And then the path of Shakti, the path of the mother, is the Mu civilization. It is a very different path, actually. And so again, we will be speaking about all of this more and more and more as we move forward through this ascension process and as we are guided. So um, in the Mu civilization, you know, it was all about energy. And so these calls to me are also about energy. And so focusing on the energy that is here and navigating the energy. Most of the time when I do these calls, I just like look into the middle distance, look through the window into nature and just kind of capture this energy that wants to be communicated here without focusing on much else. And <clears throat> I find that this way the teachings can be much purer than focusing on the person. So the divine self is a big aspect of us that actually is um, what ascension is all about. You could say that it is the coming back of the divine self through us. And it is the restoring of our ancient structure energetically. So once upon a time, we were all beings connected to the divine self. You can think of it as like a pillar of light that runs through the physical spine. But we have several non-physical spines as well. I know this from my experience of being able to go into these yogic states of consciousness that Yogananda taught. For example, that we know as Kriya Yoga. You know, Kriya Yoga, if you are a disciple of Yogananda, it never is revealed fully what it really can do for us. It must be self-realized. It is not even talked about. And I don't know any place where Yogananda would fully, fully reveal what Kriya Yoga can do for us. Kriya Yoga is not about movement, but Kriya Yoga is about movement of life force within us. And when it is done successfully, which takes practice, then one gets to self-realize the many upper layers of our own being. And again, you know, it's just about dedicated practice. And I know that sometimes doesn't sound so interesting, but the reward is always so huge that I say with a little bit of dedication, we can truly self-realize the truth of our being and then that is the most powerful state of existence. And that is when we realize the layers of who we are, each layer self-realized. That means I integrate all that I am into one. So it is integrating the body, integrating the soul, integrating all the upper bodies, the astral body, all the way to the subtle body and even experiencing the ultimate experience I believe that we can experience and that is the absolute where nothing exists and yet everything does and we become one with it. So all of this is actually written into our spine. And so once upon a time in Mu we knew all of this all the time and we didn't perceive ourselves as just the body. We had constant divine awareness of all that we are, 
And with that, we delight it in this experience. We delight it in the embodiment here on planet Earth, which never happened through birth and never ended with death. We delight it in this amazing opportunity to co-create through consciousness and experience our, I don't even want to call it life, but to experience creation here on planet Earth. Since we didn't have perception of life and death, because it had nothing to do with our true divine reality, it didn't exist. And so all that we knew was life, life here, life somewhere else, life everywhere. And so through the fall, which is the disconnect from the divine self, we then experience obviously all the dysfunction in this world that we now you know, became quite accustomed to and maybe we even call it normal. It is far from natural and it is far from the original design for this experience on planet Earth. And so <clears throat> since it is far from natural and far from the original design, you can again think of this ascension process as the return of the natural original design spiritually that means each one of us is connected once again to our divine self the biggest reconnect that took place within our physical body and our consciousness happened in 2020 and so i think everybody noticed some changes in this world in the year that we call 2020 and these changes had to do absolutely all of them with the purification of the vessel so that we can again receive the divine self that is the return of grace grace is a nickname for divine mother but the grace is also a nickname for divine self <laughs> And so today, the 22nd of November, that's again Divine Mother's Numbers. And John, happy birthday. I believe you said today is your happy birthday. So what a great number to be born on for numerology. So two and two, when you look at these numbers, they are two serpents. And the two serpents we often speak about in different uh, teachings, the serpents of creation. So all these numbers that we know, uh, they come actually from higher realms and we didn't make them up as humanity. We received them as cosmic language. So thank you. And John, thank you for all that you do here for us and all the wonderful contributions of energy. So ascension is a very complex process of restoring connection between the earth and her higher self, between you and your higher self and every single one of us. This higher self is not just a random higher self. It is higher in terms of dimension. We have several higher selves, but if we want to be precise, we will say that the human being has many layers. The first layer that we perceive here as us is you and me in these physical bodies. That's quite obvious, everybody can see it. But if you were to extend your spine into higher and higher and higher rounds, your spine would be actually pointing at a sun. And this sun is the luminous self. And the sun is at top of our multidimensional spine. And the sun is your divine self. Every single one of us has the same fractal of the divine self it means the divine self is where we all are one and then the divine self never ever descends completely into anyone and anything but it is always shining its light the divine self is not a woman the divine self is not a man the divine self is the i am it is the most eternal infinite aspect of who we are and when we can hear it, we hear, I am, I am, I am that I am. That's where it all comes from, from the level of the divine self. Now the divine self is completely luminous. And so the divine self shines like the sun. 
and it just simply does what it has always done unchangingly. It is never changed by any conditions. It always is. It is what it is. I am that I am. And so any time that we go through this experience here, which still is illusion, which still is duality, the most powerful tools that we have are the most simple tools. Number one, chanting your alms to create harmony and love and peace in this world every single day. To chant om to your life, to chant om to any situation, to chant om just because it's wonderful and because it's so powerful. But also we have the I am. And so let's say that the mind gets caught up in the illusion and in duality. We can immediately repair it by focusing on the third eye. Just like here Divine Mother has the beautiful bindu on her third eye. We focus there, we lift our gaze into the third eye and just say, I am that I am. And that alone negates duality and illusion. These are very powerful tools that we have. And this is the time of the end of complexity when it comes to our tools. Divine Mother is the mother of simplicity. Even though everything is big, the mystery is so big, and we don't need to know the mystery inside out. We just need to be part of it in love. So every day, if I was to look at, you know, how to live in this world, which we very often speak about here, and we provide the tools on how to live in this world, I would say, am I in love? Am I in love? And it doesn't have to be in love with a person, it can be in love with the world, it can be in love with humanity, it can be in love with divinity, it can be in love with Divine Mother, it can be in love with nature. But am I in love would be like the number one condition. And of course, ideally, we want to, <laughs> we want to be always just unconditionally in love. So this world is very tempting right and again we speak about let me just find a different visual here for example this one we recently co-created such beautiful visuals here and animated them for the 11 11 event which so many of you helped us create and so it's just this amazing video we now have but this is an amazing animation of our great cosmic mother and as she is moving the energy here i know that all of us will receive it and so, as Divine Mother is the mother of simplicity, this world is very tempting. The true meaning of temptation is not, you know, necessarily all the things we have known as the obvious temptation. Temptation is a much, much bigger topic, actually. And it is like this. The world is a result of all of us together and so much more. This world became a trap for those immortal beings that we are. The movie Matrix, even though it has violence in it and that's not ideal, but the movie Matrix, the number one Matrix, was the clear, actually, depiction of this world how it is. So how this world became a trap, and again, it goes deep. It goes so deep that sometimes it's too big. Sometimes it's just, we can't even comprehend it. But just think about it this way. This world became a trap for the immortal souls. And so they started to come here again and again and again through different reasons, but we called it reincarnation until 2020 until 2020 and so the world became the temptation not just what we would call you know the sex drugs and rock and roll but actually the whole world became a temptation and this is how the world started to seem like a reality the world started to seem like a reality and then we would say, this is reality. These are conditions. And then people would start liking them or disliking them. And that was part of the trap. Liking and disliking of conditions. 
that was the true meaning of temptation. Anytime we as humanity pointed at something and say, I don't like it, we were simply being tempted by the illusion on the outside of us. And the illusion want to be seen as real. And if we are in a movie theater and we point at the screen and say, I really don't like this character. I don't want to have anything to do with this character. Then it just means we are obviously not realizing that everything is a result of a projection. And so the way to actually transcend illusion is to go within and to stay true to the divine self that is omnipotent, omnipotent, eternal, and is also completely connected to source itself without any limitations. That's why we developed meditation. Meditation didn't even exist in the Mu the way that we know it now. To me, meditation is a survival mechanism. And it was introduced just to save us from this really big, big, big time illusion. So meditation was actually like a natural state of being for us in the Mu, but later it became a tool to get somewhere, to get out of the constant movie around us to go within and to switch off our five senses again back to the matrix five senses that we all share are how the illusion enters our system in mu we also had senses but we had divinely attuned senses in this civilization that you know all of us here obviously got to know the senses became part of the trap senses are not bad but they became in a way how we are held so tight in the identity of the body in the identity of the personality because we say i see it i hear it i taste it i smell it i touch it it must be real and it couldn't be farther from the truth the yogis knew this but only some yogis it really takes a lot to be able to disconnect from five senses and that is the whole teaching of the kriya yoga of yogananda yogananda the great avatar he knew how to switch off all the senses and when you switch off all the senses what you left with is your divine self and that's where the power is and so the more we learn to meditate these days, right, meditation, obviously, but many people still use the senses while they meditate and use the mind while they meditate. Well, that leads to maybe nice calming effect, but that's about it. It doesn't have the effect that we really want to experience, which is the self-realization, which is realizing the true self, which is the I am. It is realizing the true self, which is the divine self. So for that, we do need a little bit of mastery. And we are together here practicing that mastery. It takes a little bit of practice, but again, the results are amazing. When we become one, you know, it's just an energetic shift. But it is so profound that it's not in any way subtle. Self-realization is not subtle at all. It is not something that happens like step by step through some intellectual reading or through some, you know, ineffective meditations. It really is a huge shift from one self to the other self. And then all we can hear within us and we hear with our other senses is I am that I am. I am that I am. And that is the language of the divine self. The divine self actually doesn't have identity and that's why the divine self doesn't have anything to say about this little experience within this illusion. If the divine self ever had to have an opinion about something, it would not be the divine self. So the first time I got to meet, you know, the divine self was when I was 13 and I just could not understand 
how the divine self can even fit in any way into the small person that we are here in this world. So it is the light of the divine self that channels through our multidimensional spine. It goes from source itself and the light travels down and it arrives in our nervous system. It arrives in our brain centers. It arrives in our chakra system. And if we are clean and clear, it shines through completely. It just shines through so completely. And if there is something in the way, then just like, you know, if you take a pipe and the pipe will have dirt in it and you will try to put water through the pipe, it will not flow. It is exactly like that. So again, through all the different techniques we have here, and I just want to suggest again, the two that I think are the most powerful these days chanting om every single day a few times never do anything if you don't feel like it and i mean it because if you're going to be doing something like oh i hate meditation i really can't stand it and then you meditate and you have this feeling of like discomfort a dislike don't do it take the next logical step and the next logical step is something you love and so some people like to contemplate in nature and sit down with a cup of tea if that's your next logical step, follow the path of love. Follow your passion. Follow your bliss. And that will get you far. And I'm going to just again speak from a personal example just so that you know. Um, for example, I never enjoyed silent meditation. I tried it. I went to all these temples and, you know, they would let us sit for many, many days and they said focus on the black dot on the wall and they would put a black dot on the wall and for three days we were supposed to stare at the black dot. I felt uncomfortable sitting on the floor cross-legged, didn't like it. <laughs> I, was, I was not following my bliss. <laughs> and so I thought, well, what would I enjoy? And then I came across Orin, which we listened to at the beginning. And I really enjoyed listening to Orin. And I didn't like to be sitting up. I thought sitting up is not comfortable for me. I want to be laying down in my meditation. So I just laid down on the couch. And for 30 minutes, I would listen to Orin's transmissions. And so I just followed the bliss. That was my bliss. And then the next thing you know, it developed. And then it went to the next stage, the next stage, the next stage, the next stage. But it was always about following your passion, following your bliss and not putting yourself through some meditations that you're not enjoying. So again, find what you love. But if you would enjoy chanting Om every day, three times in the morning, starting your day with Om, and I'm just going to explain the reason for that and then we will close. Divine Mother, she started to come since 2017 and now and again she would completely come in a physical reality. Now and again I would have multidimensional experiences with her. But it was in 2020, before the spring equinox. I was really begging her for the next service. Because, you know, we are always in service here on this planet. How can we burst the illusion that is here and that runs so deep? How can we transcend duality in this world that again is the trap? And so I was sitting at a lake and that was um, close to Mount Shasta. And I was just talking to her out loud and there was no one there. And I just talked into the ethers. And I find that with Divine Mother, it is important to use our voice. So I was speaking it out loud. I was saying, Divine Mother, show me what is the next thing that we can do for you? How can we serve you? And so that night, Divine Mother appeared and it was in response to this call. And she said, let me show you the nature of your reality. And I'm going to find a picture here just so that you see what I'm talking about. Because I still find it, you know, to be so important since, you know, we can really make a big difference in this world by that. She showed me how we live in a quantum field. And so we are familiar with the term quantum field. And she said there are strings in the quantum field. And so I say, you know, scientists have the string theory and I've seen it. Divine Mother opened my third eye and I was able to see this quantum field. And it surrounds us like this. 
But because sometimes we have, you know, a lot of negative thought or we have thoughts that, you know, are not filled with love and sometimes we do things that are not so great. And every time that we use life force without that love, without consciousness, it creates holes and kind of like broken strings in our quantum field. And then we live our life and our life experiences reflect this broken field. So then we have so-called also broken lives or broken experiences or broken relationships, who knows what. And Divine Mother said, I'll show you how to fix all of this with Om. And then she said, just chant Om and see what happens. And so I was with her and I could see the quantum field. And I definitely had some holes in my quantum field. And so I just chanted Om, just simply sang my Om. And I don't know if Zoom right now will be able to transmit the sound. Sometimes when we do Om on Zoom for some reason, it is not audible. But I'm going to do one Om and please do one Om with me. Oh. And so with this one Om, which is the sound of creation, we will speak again in the future about many different sounds of creation, but the one that creates, the one that is within all things created, is the sound of OM. And it is A-U-M, but we can totally just sing it or pronounce it as O-M. It is totally fine. I've seen the power of it. It is not so much about how it is pronounced. It is about the power of it. And when I sang that one OM with Divine Mother, all the strings around me that were broken just remembered the divine perfection. And these strings started to repair themselves by themselves, by the frequency of Om. So sound creates, sound heals. As we know, sound healing, of course. Everyone knows the power of sound. And so I now highly recommend to everyone to never skip your OMS. OMS repair quantum reality. And just a few days ago, I received a phone call from a lady uh, who was definitely, you know, uh, I would say retired and she found this teaching that I've been sharing here about OM. And so she took all her old photos of her life. And I think she was in her 80s, she said. And she just took all the photos of her life, the broken relationships, the divorces, and who knows what. And she said she just sat down with all these black and white photos. And she chanted Om to every single one of them. And she said her life completely changed. Just by chanting Om to our life fixing past, present and future all at once. And so my recommendation is again, just going forward to focus on the three steps every day, even if you don't think you need it, purify. When you think you have done purification and you don't need it, purify the world, purify yourself and the world every single day with something. It could be as simple as singing your alms to the world. Number two is adding light to your own being, adding light to your community, adding light to the world. And we do it through meditation and we have great tools for that as well. Simply calling in the light. Everything can be so simple. I'm calling in the light. I am bringing the light. I am anchoring the light. As I walk here upon this world, light comes through me. And then finally, am I all love? Am I in love with life? We are not asked to love, for example, when someone's criminal. We are not asked to love the ones who, you know, abuse the world. That is different. It's actually a misunderstanding. But we are asked to be the divine self. And the divine self, as you know, is the sun. Really sun, the shining sun. And so the shining sun doesn't change. The shining sun doesn't say, I need to send love to this and not to that. The sun is what it is. I am that I am. That is the language of the sun. That is the language of the divine self. And so with that, 
I will close by again a little transmission of beautiful energy here from our Maha Prakriti, just the one we had. This is a new world that we are in. And as she transmits her beautiful light blue energy, many people around the world are seeing the light blue light. I've now heard so many people saying they start seeing light blue light around them. They even had visitations of Divine Mother and she was in light blue light. Very often we would see orbs around people that are light blue light. This is the return of the Mother. And so here, these Zoom calls, I used to do them new moon to full moon, but right now I'm at school studying, so I don't have so much time. But we will again meet in a few days and it will be in December. And so I will put it on the website. I will send an email, but just so that you know, it will be on December 6th, which for me is a Friday here in the US. And what is happening right now, you know, we are in the process of purification. So many of you might be having multidimensional experiences. We are working in teams in higher realms and we are working with Divine Mother. We are working with her elements. We are working now, right now, for example, with the element of water in higher realms. We are purifying the waters of the earth. We are working with the great Yogananda, whether you like him or not, whether you've seen him or not, whether you've learned from him or not, Yogananda is a great being who's been redesigning this world since 2020. And he is absolutely in charge in higher realms. And he is the one who redesigned the death process of the human being since 2020. So we no longer are in the trap of reincarnation. So Yogananda is teaching all of us in higher realms right now. And we are all learning about our light body. And so our next event will be on Friday, December the 6th. And also this December, um, which will be around the solstice, which will be super, super important time. I will be teaching a free online retreat and it will be all about embodying the divine self. And so thank you so much for being here and many blessings to all of you. Thank you.